Today I'm at Squirrel in Los Angeles to gain inspiration for my own version of a true family favorite, ricotta toast and jam. It's hard for me to enjoy a slice of Squirrel's ricotta toast and not think of my grand and auntie Maud. It's just so much in the spirit of the Aussie food I grew up with. My mom's Australian, so when I have this, it sort of feels like the California version of like scones with clotted cream and jam. It's really simple, it's really ingredient forward, and I love that it's just really about the flavors of the jam, the cheese, and the toast coming together. It's absolutely beautiful. You want to Instagram it immediately. You have this giant thick slice of brioche, beautiful whipped ricotta on top, and then not one, but three jams in a row. Now the question is, how do you attack this? It's basically the size of a porterhouse. So I don't think I should like lift it up and eat it unless you want to see me with a big ricotta mustache. So I'm gonna attack it with a fork and knife. Moment of truth, can something this simple be that good? Answer is emphatic yes, it is absolutely delicious. Mm, I love that. The fruit really comes forward because the ricotta is the perfect canvas. It's creamy, but simple. So it allows the fruit to really be the star here. Jam is really just three things. It's fruit, sugar, and acid combined, but you can really transform flavors with it. And I love the idea of doing a quick version at home that I think you can enjoy almost immediately and on your own ricotta toast. The one thing I learned about eating at Squirrel is that toast can definitely be the star of the show for any breakfast. So we're gonna kind of do the same thing today. We have our toast, but we're also gonna do homemade ricotta, which is so easy to make. I feel like most of you probably have the ingredients in your fridge. And then we're gonna make one of my favorite quick jams. It's gonna be quick and easy to do and perfect for breakfast. Let's get started with the ricotta. So I have two cups of whole milk, one cup of heavy cream, lemon juice, some salt, and that's it. I'm going to heat up the milk and cream together just until it's barely simmering. I'm going to turn off the heat, add the lemon, add the salt, just stir it once just to integrate everything, and then I'm gonna let it sit. So by heating the milk and then adding acid and a little bit of salt, what it does is it makes it curdle. So you end up with curds and whey, just like Little Miss Muffet on her tuffet. Now that the curds have formed, I'm gonna let this sit for another 10 minutes, and then we're gonna strain it. This is really fun to do with kids because it's kind of a science experiment. They know what milk is like, it's creamy, they drink it, but when they get to watch the transformation of it turning into cheese, that's pretty awesome. So this is thick enough that now I can start actually straining the cheese. I have my strainer on top of a bowl with some cheesecloth, so I'm going to pour off the mixture. We're now separating the curds from the whey. So the whey that's coming out is basically the liquid, the milk protein and water. So that's coming out of it. What we're left with, which you can see is kind of starting to separate a little bit, is the cheese. Now I'm just gonna transfer this to a clean bowl so that it can finish draining. And while I'm waiting on that, I'll get started on making my jam. The first thing to go in is two cups of strawberries and then about a cup of raspberries. I'm gonna give those a quick stir. And then the sugar. I'm gonna stir this all together. So while that's cooking, I'm gonna add some lemon zest and then the juice of two lemons. Now, the reason why this is a quick jam instead of a regular jam is that I'm just making it on the stove top, chilling it to serve, and that's it. I'm not planning on having this be on my counter for a long period of time. The lemon juice is really important. It adds a little bit of acid. It's really necessary considering how much sugar you usually put in jams, and it really helps with the texture. So while that keeps cooking, I'm gonna get started on the vanilla bean. So I'm going to cut it open, scrape the seeds out, and put the seeds and the whole bean pods in there to cook all together to get that really amazing vanilla flavor. I love adding vanilla bean, especially to berry jam. It actually kind of reminds me of like adding clotted cream to a scone. You actually are like adding this like creamy, beautiful, texture and flavor right into the jam itself. So this is gonna cook now over medium heat for about like 20, 30 minutes, just until everything cooks down and starts thickening up a little bit. Once it cools down, I'm gonna add kind of my secret ingredient. I'm gonna add just a little tiny amount of balsamic vinegar. It has a really round flavor, it has a lot of depth, and just makes it feel a little more elegant, a little more sophisticated. And it smells so ridiculous in here, oh my goodness. So I'm gonna finish up the ricotta. I'm just gonna give it a little squeeze for luck. Oh yeah, this is really well strained. And I'm just going to open it up into this little bowl. So I'm just gonna dump this out into the bowl. Look at how thick that is, oh my gosh. All right, let's see the jam. All right, that looks really good. So the jam is ready to go. I'm gonna add the balsamic vinegar right now, give it a little stir, and then turn off the heat. And it looks very liquidy right now but it is going to cool down and get much thicker. I'm gonna let this come to room temperature before I put it in the fridge to finish chilling. 
Then the ricotta goes in the fridge too until I'm ready to have my toast. Oh, this is my favorite part. I get to eat it. This is great. And this is kind of a fun meeting of old world. This is my great grandmother's tea set. So I'm very excited to be using that. And the new world being sort of the squirrel style toast. So this is gonna be so delicious. I have our sourdough toast and you can see it's about an inch thick. So it's really, really thick, just like at squirrel. So this means it's gonna be very hard to fit in your actual toaster. So you wanna use a toaster oven or a broiler. Now we're gonna build it. So I'm gonna do a big, big blob and I want it thick, like probably about a quarter inch thick. Next, we have the jam. So this is now cooled to room temperature and you can see it's really thick. All right, so I'm gonna pour this out and do a big sweep. What I love about this and one of the things that makes it so new world is just how robust it is. It's huge. Here we go, time to have a bite. This looks so delicious. Oh wow, that is just absolutely delicious. I feel like my grand and auntie Maude would have really, really liked that. It's a celebration of simplicity in the best way possible and on a really grand scale. I'm gonna enjoy my cuppa and finish this giant plate of toast. Thank you so much for watching. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. To see more videos like this one, click here. To subscribe to Food Network's YouTube channel, click here. Please comment below, like the video if you like it. We love hearing from you. See you next time.